everyone, welcome to Cook's Cuisine. I'm Kelsey Cook, and today you will notice that I don't have any guests with me. And that's because we're cooking for Uno today. These are one-man meals, you know, which is the majority of college students' meals I've found. You know, even if you have a roommate, a lot of the time you and the roommate aren't eating the same thing, and you gotta make something for yourself. So today I'm showing you how to make my Mediterranean pasta dish, which is kind of an everything but the kitchen sink dish that I created. It was one of those nights where I wanted to make something where I was testing out how many things I could put into this dish and have it still be edible. And, and then I reached a stopping point. So that stopping point included um, whole wheat linguine, Alfredo sauce, yes, delicious, feta cheese, um, frozen peas, and then raisins. And I know people are like, what? Raisins? Like, no, what, what is she doing with this one? But I promise it's actually really good. Raisins, walnuts, and nutmeg. So I know for the last three, people are gonna get skeptical, but I recommend just maybe tossing a raisin in, trying to bite with it. If you don't like it, that's fine, but try it once. And the plus to this meal is it's 15 minutes top to bottom. So super simple, hardly any prep. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is the thing that takes the longest to cook, and that is our whole wheat linguine. Um, this stuff you can get at the store. I prefer using fresh pasta rather than the dried stuff just because it's fresh, for God's sakes. Of course it tastes better. So once you've got this water boiling, I use about a third, which is serving for one person. It, it makes quite a bit, actually. Get a little messy with it, that's okay. And I'm just gonna dump it in. I've actually already salted this water, which is kind of the only chance you get in cooking pasta to give it some, some flavor, some taste. You can add salt after, of course, but in the cooking process, it helps. And I'm gonna turn my heat from high to medium high. You don't wanna keep it at high where you had it for boiling, or else you're gonna get like a geyser of hot water and pasta, and we can't have that. So we're gonna keep it there. And this only needs to boil for about six to eight minutes. You should check it with, um, a fork, taste a noodle. I prefer mine to be al dente, just a little firm. Some people are really big on that they want theirs all the way cooked through, kind of mushy, which is not what I recommend, but just check it, you know, taste for yourself. So while we do that, and even still, maybe turn down a little bit. It has a tendency to come up. Okay, so while that's cooking, we're gonna move on to our roux. And a lot of people are like, the hell's a roux, you know? Roux is a weird word. All it is is a sauce thickener. It's butter, flour, and milk. Super easy. Uh, it's used a lot in thickening gravy. And today we're gonna use it and then add um, Parmesan cheese and make an Alfredo sauce, sweet. So what we've done, we've got a pretty heavy deep dish saucepan because we're gonna be adding about a cup of milk eventually. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna drop two tablespoons of butter right into the pan. My pan's been warming up a little bit. It's just on medium. You don't need it any warmer than that. And it's gonna keep melting down. Perfect. And once the butter's completely melted, what we're gonna do is add um, two teaspoons of flour, and that's gonna be the thickener. That's what's really gonna give it um, good consistency. I'm just gonna let that keep on melting for a little bit. The thing that's great about this Alfredo sauce roux is that you can use it on so much more than pasta. You can use it as a base for pizza. So you can make like a chicken Alfredo pizza with like roasted garlic and sun-dried tomatoes and green onions and ah, uh, making, me, making me hungry right now. Um, you can also make Italian nachos with it. I don't know if you guys have tried that, but once you have that, you never go back to regular nachos. It's tortilla chips, um, usually like Italian sausage or ground beef and then Alfredo sauce poured over the top. Yeah, it's right, it's really right. So we're gonna just do two teaspoons, as I said, of flour. Don't have to be incredibly accurate, this isn't baking. And throw that in, and then use a whisk. If you guys don't have a whisk, a uh, fork or spoon is kind of gonna be the best alternative. And this looks really weird. It's the first time I made roux, I remember thinking, oh God, I'm making this wrong because there's no way this is going to eventually be Alfredo sauce, but it's fine. It's gonna get really bubbly. And what you wanna do, you just wanna whisk it around until the flour is cooked, or in other words, the flour is not white anymore. It's just kind of this bubbly, buttery mixture. So from there, all you do, dump in a little less than a cup of milk, just like that and then continue to whisk. So easy, you guys, just really not, not a hard dish at all, but there's nothing better than homemade Alfredo sauce. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let that thicken for a little bit, 
we're going to actually take the heat down to low. We're going to let it simmer. After this is simmered for oh, probably a couple minutes or so, then you're going to dump in Parmesan cheese and continue to stir it with the whisk every now and then. Keep it, you know, in the right consistency, keep it thick and everything. And within, oh, probably five or six minutes, depending on how thick you want it. I know some people like their sauce almost like milk consistency and some people like it thicker. So that's how we're gonna leave it now. And then the only other cooking step while these things are going on is our frozen peas, which you microwave for a minute and a half. Like it's really nothing. So actually I prefer to do this once things are cooked and you just zap it in the microwave, not a big deal. So we're gonna let that sit. We're gonna stir the roux again a little bit. You know what's funny is that when I started on the show and they told me that I was gonna have guests every episode, I was kinda like, oh, I don't know about that. You know, I'm 